My name is Elena Carreiras. I'm the Dean of the School of Sociology and Public Policy at the Lisbon University Institute. I've been studying gender and the military for over 30 years, which is a long time, but it gave me the opportunity to follow the great transformations of this uh, silent revolution, the uh, entry of women in the armed forces. Um, since I did this, I followed very closely the uh, initiative that uh, followed from the approval of the 1325 uh, United, uh, United Nations Security Council resolution, uh, and uh, that was really a groundbreaking uh, document because it uh, started what, what some have called a new gender regime in international security. The problem is that uh, almost 20 years past this uh, resolution, uh, there are problems with implementation. Uh, things have not proceeded as expected in terms of um, reaching the main goals of this uh, um, new policy, that is, um, introducing a gender perspective in international security operations and raising the number of women and uh, women's participation in all uh, areas of uh, conflict resolution, peace agreements, uh, peace building, etc. So uh, one of the things I'm doing now is trying to understand why such a robust um, regime, because a lot of documents and uh, policies have been designed by both uh, international organizations and states alike, have not been so successful as expected. One of the things I will try to focus on is the, uh, the national policy level. Because, uh, of course, international operations are um, composed of contingents that come from uh, uh, national forces. And so what happens at the national level is really important to help us explain uh, the, the lack of uh, accomplishment of, of uh, the uh, international policies. Um, I, my idea is to focus on policies and policies developed at, in, at the national level by doing a comparative study. Uh, I think it's really uh, important to have this comparative uh, focus uh, so that we can understand the, the, the differences regarding recruitment and retention of women, regarding um, training and socialization, and regarding the, the deployment, uh, the policies uh, regarding deployment. So these will be three areas where I will focus, because uh, what we know from research is that not always explicit policy um, produces the results one aims at. That is, policies focused and aimed at uh, promoting uh, formal integration do not always uh, produce social integration and may sometimes even have the opposite result. So uh, the idea is to uh, ask the question, under which conditions will policies be successful? Under which conditions will gender integration um, uh, be successful uh, and uh, provide men and women with uh, greater equality in, in this type of forces? Uh, because, of course, um, there are many uh, variables that might influence um, policies. So uh, my idea is that we should really take into account context very seriously, uh, understand uh, why uh, certain variables uh, regarding to the policies themselves, institutional anchorage, uh, its congruence or conflict with other gender policies, um, also internal characteristics, their rigidity or uh, flexibility, their stability or volatility, the coordination, the forms of implementation and control, how all these variables can help explain variation and differences that we uh, observe in terms of uh, national policies. And maybe then we can at the same time, uh, also better understand what happens at the level of international uh, organizations and missions, and understand why the why then the 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 regime, the agenda of women, peace, and security uh, has not been as successful. And at the same time, then uh, have the conditions to also 
um, see how to improve this uh, this uh, agenda.